This is the brand new Canyon Spectral CF7. And although it looks more depressing than a goth's bedroom in a blackout, it's actually one of the most joyful and enjoyable all-round trail bikes I've ridden in a long time. You way! And at a super affordable price. So, what's changed over the previous Canyon, which, to be honest, I thought was a bit dull, and the 125 Spectral, which couldn't really see the point of either, to make this one of my most favourite recent bike launches. In part one, I'm going to go through all the frame features and all the spec that makes this an outstanding bargain on paper. And then in part two, I'm going to talk you through what makes it an equally outstanding bike on the trail. So for a start up, nothing much has changed with the layout, as you can see. Still a four bar setup, still shock in the center, and the geometry is pretty much identical too. 64 degree head angle, 76.5 degree seat angle, so great all round trail numbers. What has changed is that Canyon have actually made the reach numbers much more regular throughout the sizing, and they've upscaled like they have on their other trail bikes. So now a medium comes with a 475 mil reach, which is the same as the large in the previous model. Plus it's now a regular step of 25 mil between each model size, between the extra small and the extra large. And the extra small model is new as well, because they've used a shorter shock, that means they can put a smaller back wheel in, the 27.5, and create an extra small model in the range as well. So great news for smaller or younger riders. Now, going to that shorter stroke shock does mean they've dropped travel. Again, not something a lot of brands are doing currently. Everyone's kind of going up in travel, getting more progressive, but no, I really, really like the fact that this bike now splits the difference between the previous 160, 150 mil travel spectral and the 125 mil travel spectral with 140 mil at the rear and 150 at the front. And I'll go into the reasons for that later when we get into the ride. But they've also done some changes to the shock, which means it's now slightly more linear in terms of its progression. There's not as much leverage at the start of the stroke. They've also included some geometry changes in it. You've got half a degree of change at the back of the shock there, just by flipping that eccentric. And then you've got a flip chip at the rear. And by, because this is on an offset angle, that means that not only does it bring the rear wheel in, it also completes the geometry essentially the same whether you're running 29er as it comes as standard in this CF7 or 27.5 mullet MX, whatever you want to call it uh, as an option or as standard on the CF8, which also comes as a coil shot because yes, that new kinematic means you can run a uh, wind up springer in there, not just an air can. There's also a CF9 model, which comes with, you know, a more expensive spec and rock shock suspension. But interestingly, Having seen the reviews of the other guys who've ridden this bike and heard their feedback on the trail at the launch event, I think I have got the winner here with this really, really affordable version. Right, so now let's talk about some of the details because there's some really, really neat features on here. Start, you're not getting any internal headset cable routing. It all comes through the front of the head tube. You've got a neat little Canyon tool stored under the top tube there if you tick that box on the spec list. You've got another accessory mount here for your CO2s for bolt-on tools, another bag in there if you wanted. You've got bottle cage sat under the shock there, and you've got internal storage now. It's smaller in terms of its entrance orifice than a specialised stump jumper, so I doubt I'd be able to get a Kendall's Jumbo sausage roll in there unscathed like I can on the specialised bike. But there's a little tube in there that you put your inner tube, your tools, everything else, and you can, again, that's another tick option on the uh, site when you're buying it from Canyon, but that slides in and out perfectly easily, so as far as I'm concerned, that's all fine by me. It's certainly not one of those internal storage things where it's more of a fight than it is actually useful, and I really, really like the clip release on this. It's got a proper sort of lockover catch like a toolbox, which is really, really easy to use, there's no awkward lever on the side or anything that feels like it's going to get jammed. Really simple and clean. Plus, the underside of the hatch is also really, really simple and clean. So, you're not taking up half your storage space with the locking mechanism, which is ridiculously common on these kind of designs. 
other practical touches. All the bolts for the pivots are kind of hidden from the outside, so you've got this really, really sleek look. Basically, it's blind-headed suspension. They all do up from the far side. Plus, the locking bolts on the pivot bearings themselves are all in one piece, so you get bearing head, seal and bolt all in one. So, saves a bit of weight and just means there's less parts falling about when you're servicing the suspension. All good things. You're getting really, really neat rubber armour on here. You can see you've got these battlements along the chainstay. You've got a little bit underneath the chainstay as well for chain slap. You've got belly armour on here. And although for some reason my sample bike hasn't got it, that chainstay armour there should come forward and sync with another piece just under the back of the seat tube there to completely shield that main pivot bearing from debris and roost entering from the bottom of the frame. Other detail changes, they've moved up to a 34.9 seat post. Now that's a trick Scott have been doing for a long time, but by doing that it means you've got a much larger shaft, which when you're running a seat post with more extension means a stiffer, stronger, more reliable seat post. You get Canyon's G5 seat posts are standard, and that's, a, that's another one of these designs with an adjustable collar which means that you can set the uh, travel in micro increments and you get a different size seat post stroke on every frame size. So I'll list these here now. But whichever size frame you get, you're getting a lot of seat post stroke now for your bike, which means you've got more room to swing your pants about and keep the bike under control. All right, Joe? You give them out. Yeah. 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 Woo. Yeah. The witness, the sickness. While this bike is Shimano, you've got full SRAM UDH compatibility on that dropout hanger. You've got really neat cable and hose insertion and exit points throughout. There's some really nice structural details as well. You've got a single sided ridge here to stiffen up that bottom bracket area because obviously they've had to put the kink in to get the water bottle cage in and get that down tube storage in. But because it's single sided, that means it's not going to form a puddle that's full of water and grit just sitting there like it can on a lot of designs. You've also got a really short, stiff linkage there, which really locks down the front to rear performance of the bike. And that's, again, that's something I'll go into on the ride, but it's really, really crucial on the vibe of this Spectral. And, while well, I haven't checked it, I'm guessing the alignment on this bike is absolutely spot on. Because even though it's got standard eyes front and rear, it actually feels more like a trunnion shop with a bearing on the back. It really is that supple. While it comes with a small chain guide tab, as standard, you can fit a full ISCG mount to the bottom bracket collar there. Plus, it's a standard threaded bottom bracket, so no squeaky press feet nightmares lurking in the future. There's also some subtle reprofiling on all the tubes. Actually, to be honest, down tube reprofiling isn't so subtle. That's much broader to get that storage in there but Canyon have sh made it shallower too, so it's not over stiff, and they've made the top tube broader and shallower too. Again, to manage the ride characteristics of those carbon tubes. It's full carbon, if I haven't said that already, so you're not dealing with a carbon mainframe with an alloy back end, and the whole frame comes in around 2,602. I, mean, I say around, that's a pretty precise number. I haven't weighed that, that's Canyon's claim, but they're generally pretty much spot on. And that means, despite all these additions, despite the frame being longer, and some of that weight has come out because they've also slimmed down the rear end. You've got slimmer stays and you've got a more sculpted chain stay. Now, not only does this, that give you more heel clearance when you're pedaling, but it also means they've deliberately injected more flex into the back of the bike. That's something that's absolutely crucial for just how playful and poppy this bike feels. They've kept their good old Quixel axle system with the flip-out lever that means you don't have to worry about an Allen key for that rear axle. There's plenty of leverage in that pop-out design uh, to let you get the back wheel in and out quickly. And when I've been changing between the 29 and the 27 5 inch rear wheel, it's a super simple job. Just undo these two bolts, flip them around, flip the chips around, and then re-bolt them up pop the back wheel in. Literally less than a five minute job each time. Then finally, we have the KIS steering system. Canyon's unique, well, Canyon and Lightville, but you rarely see a Lightville, so that doesn't really count, although it is uh, 
Joe Cleaver's design, the uh, sort of guru behind Lightville. But basically, it's a little, it's a spring-loaded strap that wraps around the steerer, and by sliding this little tab backwards and forwards when you unbolt it, that lets you change the tension in the strap and that changes how much the steering self-corrects while you're riding it. So it's basically an adjustable level of helicopter parenting for the handling of your Spectral. And while the frames are longer, plus you've got internal storage, Canyon say they've only added 20 grams over the previous design, which brings it in at 2,602 grams, according to their numbers, for a medium frame. And if that's true, well, that's a really, really good weight for a bike that's rated to ASTM 4 for enduro racing. The only real design glitch is that because there's just clips inside the frame to hold the hoses and the cables, rather than sort of into fully internal trunking, it does rattle a bit. So that's probably something you're gonna to want to damp down with a bit of foam when, if you get a Spectral yourself. Canyon have done a, re a really good job with the spec on this bike as well, I reckon. Starting off Fox 36 Rhythm Fork, massively underrated piece for suspension hardware really really plush super simple to operate you've just got a compression sweep lever on the top rebound on the bottom but it's very very forgiving of even quite a haphazard suspension setting plus the numbers printed on the back are actually pretty accurate considering it's the fox you've got dt swiss m1900 wheels not the lightest by a long stretch but absolutely bomb proof not only the rims but the spokes and the hubs these are wheels that will last you forever so even if you upgrade to a lighter set i would strongly recommend you keep these in reserve for when your lighter set blows up as they inevitably will matching that fox 36 rhythm fork you've got a fox float x performance shock Again, not the most advanced piece of equipment, but you do get a pedal lever on the side and you get rebound just as well. But what they've absolutely nailed with this shock is the tune for the bike. It feels absolutely super plush. So although you can run a coil and I've got one that will fit, I haven't even bothered putting it in yet because this feels about as smooth as I could want. So really, really impressed with the tune on that. The only thing I would say is that it does blow through travel pretty easily with the stock spacers in there. So I've added, sm I've added a smaller intermediate spacer to give it a little bit more progression to keep me from bombing it out too regularly. In terms of stop and go, you've got a full set of Shimano SLX. Just probably the most cost effective performance mountain bike group set you can get. Yes, the shifting isn't quite as quick and sharp as digital or XTR. And, you know, you've got cables which, you know, oh no, look a bit archaic if you're used to wireless. But in terms of really, really reliable, consistent, super easy to service shifting, then SLX is absolutely on point. And while the brakes don't have bike point adjust, well, that's a massive advantage when it comes to Shimano because it means you've got none of those bike point issues that can affect the more expensive groups. And with 200 mil rotors either end, you are not short on stopping power. And so you don't skid when you heel haul in those big rotors, you've got Maxxis DHR tires front and rear. Now, I reckon that's a bit of a slow rolling combo. So people who want a bit of a faster pedal might want to change that, but in terms of grip, traction and dependable kind of carcass strength then you're onto a winner with the dhrs especially as they put while well, they put an exo on the front you've got an exo plus casing for a bit more protection on the rear and then for the finishing kit you get canyon's own thoroughly decent g5 alloy equipment so you get g5 alloy bar the 780 mil reach you get 40 mil stem you get g5 uh, lock on grips and Little highlight there, you get Shimano's own dropper lever operating this Canyon G5 adjustable stroke seat post. And I have to say, that Shimano lever is something of a gem. There's loads of aftermarket levers available, but it's got a really, really nice smooth bearing action in there and uh, just a really nice sort of neat functional form to it. If you like a bit of 
sculpture the handlebars like I do. And then you've got a top quality ergon seat looking after your rump. So in terms of what they fitted to this bike, I really don't think they've made any mistakes at all for an aggressive all-weather rider. The only quite slight gr gr grumble I've got is that niggling rattle in those Shimano fins pads. But if you look around online, there's a load of little hacks you can do, looping like rubber bands over the pins and stuff like that, just to stop them from rattling and keep your canyon nice and quiet. So that's the bike on paper in terms of geometry, spec and frame features. Now onto part two, where I talk about the most important thing on any bike, the ride quality. And this one is definitely worth watching if you're in the market for a really, really well sorted, playful, poppy, all-rounder, an absolutely belting price. So thanks for watching the first bit. Thanks to Canyon for supplying me for the bike with the bike for test. Thanks to my regular channel sponsor and thanks to my Patreon subscribers who support the channel on a monthly basis and are absolutely vital for the sustainability of this channel. So if you enjoy what I'm doing, please consider joining them uh, with a monthly pledge and you'll get early, exclusive and ad-free edits as a thank you. But for now, I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kes TV, going through the stats and frame details on this Canyon CF7. See you in part two to dig into the ride. Then it's always good to ride with the youngsters, keeping you honest, on the edge, getting the drops in. <laughs> nice parking, Rob.